Okay, hello YouTube. Um, today we're going to be going over what I like to call my quirky um, kind of bishop move that doesn't get played very often in the time and variation. It happens after e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, and then we'll have d4, c, d4, knight d4. We'll say uh, e6, knight b5, d6, bishop f4, e5. Here we could play, if we wanted to, we could play knight on 1 to c3, and we could offer up this bishop, and then they have a couple options here already. They could take the bishop, or they could play the move pawn to a6. And then if they play pawn to a6, we can continue by offering that bishop again. We can play the move g bishop g5, and just kind of continue to offer them kind of this quirky type of sacrifice. Well, anyways, before we dive any further, if you like um, content like this and you want to see more of it, uh, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click on your notification icon. Well, needless to say, I would say that this idea is... Um, pretty speculative. So it's something that I toy with, but at the same time, the engines don't totally hate it. Um, but there's a couple of lines that do give me a little bit of pause, where I'm kind of a little on the fence about whether or not this is sound. Now, I do think that coming at this from the Lasker Pelican move order is probably a little bit more sound. Um, then coming at it from the Taimanov move order, actually coming at it from the Taimanov move order, it's actually very possible that e takes f4 is just a solid enough move to cause problems. So if we come at it from a straight Taimanov move order, so like e6, d4, cd4, knight d4, knight c6, knight b5, d6, bishop f4, e5, knight c3, coming at it from the straight Taimanov move order, I think that the move e takes f4 actually offers the best prospects for black, even though white does get, again, in these lines, white does get some very interesting play, and white does get some uh, sufficient counterplay for the material. So the first thing we do is we play knight d5, and we're focusing all of our energy on this c7 square, and we're creating some threats. So immediately, if they think that you've made a terrible, terrible mistake, they'll play rook b8 to try to hold all their material, and that would be a terrible, terrible mistake because black would immediately lose to mate in two. So you would check, and then you would play here, and actually a move ago, the best thing to do would be to sack the queen because after f5, queen f5, this is simply checkmate, and the game would be over. So at this point already, it's apparent that black has to give up some of his material um, in order to save his position. Also, the move queen a5 is is pretty bad as well. We would just play c3, and that maintains all of the previous problems. We we haven't actually solved anything here. So like if, for example, rook to b8, we could simply play b4 again. Notice this this queen actually has nowhere to go. Uh, if it goes here, it's walking directly into this fork. All of these other squares are, in fact, covered. It doesn't have any place better to go than all the way back to d8, and we have the exact same mate that we had a move ago. So none of these moves really work very well for black um, once we have unleashed the threat of knight c7. So they're just going to have to give us some material back, uh, which shouldn't be a big deal. They should just play the move bishop e6, just develop a piece, and go ahead and give us that rook on a8. And now after knight c7 check, king b7, we can take it. And then the move I recommend, because it's very, very tricky, um, and also because it just develops a piece and is likely the best move, is just simply bishop to b5. Now. The tricky part of this move is it allows the move pawn to a6, and if they play pawn a6, we have knight b6 check, picking up the free queen on the a8 square, which is another potential for a quick win here. The difficulty with this position is I'm not 100% sure um, that this position is advantage white, or even if white has quite enough compensation for the material at this point. Um, all of my engine analysis gets me to a point where white is fairly close to equal, uh, but the engine still seems to favor black a little bit in some of the best lines. Uh, I would recommend, if you're playing black, I would actually recommend against, um, if, for example, let's say knight f6 castles, I would actually recommend against going after more stuff. Like, I don't think you should actually go for more material. After, say, knight takes e4, c4, knight f6, rook e1, it seems like the computer actually favors white in these positions, because now we have enough open lines to actually get at the king, and we haven't spent enough moves actually solving our very serious problem that we have right now with the bishop on f8 and the rook on h8. 
And this is part of the reason that I really like the practical chances here against um, human players, because we have uh, this very loose king on d7, and it's not clear to me exactly how black is supposed to unwind um, his position in any real natural way in these positions that makes sense. But this position would actually be considered slight edge white. Like white could continue like after queen d8, which is a very good move, sidestepping all of the problems. White could play queen d4, and white still has some sort of slight edge in this position. So that position would be slight edge white, but also just positions in general where they take this pawn on e4 should probably be considered slight edge white. So it seems like the best way to go would be something like knight on g to e7, allowing white to capture the pawn on f4. And then a6, it seems like the best move is bishop e2, g5, maybe knight e6, f e6, and then maybe h4, g h4, rook h4. And white hasn't castled in this case, but he's opened up lines to try to get at the black king. Knight g6, rook back to h1, bishop e7, g3, queen g8, queen d2, knight e5, castles queen side. And I'm giving this as unclear. Although the engine actually thinks that black has a slight advantage here. But I still think this position is very unclear because I still have no clear um, game plan as to how exactly black unwinds his position or how exactly black solves any of his problems. Whereas white has a much clearer game plan. Like white wants to play something like king b1 and then maybe f4 e5 for example to start trying to break through and get to the position of the black king. And at the very least, this position offers a lot of practical chances and a lot of room to explore um, within this position. But certainly, um, this whole continuation, uh, beginning with the move pawn captures f4, can be avoided if we come at this only from the last Republican move order. So that's if after knight c6, we're playing d4, cd4, knight d4, and they're exclusively playing the move, uh, we'll say, e5 in this position. And then they're going to do it from this, uh, they're going to play a Lowenthal. Um, then, like, we play knight on 1 to c3, a6, now bishop g5, and now we've avoided this possibility of e takes f4 because we're only playing it from this continuation. So this is also possible. Now at this point, they can transpose back into Alaska Pelican with knight f6, playing a Kalishnikov is off, which is of course the whole reason that I came up with this quirky bishop g5 or bishop f4 move to begin with, is I'm avoiding independent Kalishnikov lines. So that's basically the idea behind this move is we're avoiding independent Kalishnikov lines because here we can't play a Kalishnikov because knight d6 is, of course, completely winning. So we're forcing our opponent to play something either quirky and independent or to transpose back into Alaska Pelican is basically what we're doing. So if we go back to... Um, where we would have gotten to this out of the Taimanov, so like e6, d4, and we come back to it this direction, we would get to this same position after a6 and bishop g5. So that's another way that we can get to this position. And now they would play the move pawn to f6, and now we really get into the meat of this entire quirky sacrifice. So these positions are really unclear. So unlike the e takes f4 lines, where I feel like the positions are somewhat unclear, but there's at least one or two lines that I'm worried might favor black a little bit. These lines are just genuinely unclear. I'm not sure if any line fully favors black here because of how unclear these positions are. And this is kind of incredible because white is giving up a full piece in these positions. But it is super unclear how black ever finishes development or ever solves all of the problems that white presents black with in the near term. So we start with knight d5, again, putting that pressure on c7. That basically forces a b5, and then we have bishop e3. So here's the frustrating, so we have this long-term problem. How do we solve our development? How do we get our king to safety? But we have these short-term problems too. There's this immediate threat of bishop to b6, queen d7, knight c7, check, picking up that rook on a8. And once again, as in the other lines, we don't have a really simple way to just sidestep this and solve this. In this case, it's a little bit more complicated, but if we were to play something just simple like rook b8 and say, you're not going to take my rook, we simply can't refute white's idea. 
If bishop b6 now, queen d7, knight c7 check, king f7, this king is going to be taking a walk, we would play bishop b5. And this is the crux of the whole thing. And now keep in mind, we've only got one pawn for the piece at this point. But we have serious weaknesses on these light squares, and we don't have a clear way for this king to get to safety in a timely enough manner to save the game. So if, for example, we were to play something like g6, just trying to shuffle that king over to g7 and tuck the king away someplace where it's safe, white is just jumping on this all too fast. Bishop c4, king g7, knight e6. And already here, black would actually be required to sacrifice the queen, which is supposed to lead to a position that's actually relatively close to equality, although white should have the advantage long term in the endgame. So like after queen takes e6, bishop e6, bishop e6, we should just be able to like castle kingside and then just maybe push our queenside pawns with some sort of advantage for white here. But if king h6, which is the more natural move, we would have a winning position after bishop e3, g5, and then queen g4 preventing that queen sack, but also threatening and preparing the move pawn to h4, which will be winning on the next move. So for example, queen e7, h4, bishop e6, hg5, king f5, this is completely um utterly uh winning we would they would have to sacrifice their queen after bishop f7 because if the king comes up um they're getting mated so like queen h3 is mate if king h6 queen g7 is mate queen g6 is mate even after they sack the queen they're actually still getting mated after queen f5 castles queen side you would have the same a basic checkmate pattern over here so basically in a nutshell um if we play rook b8 Black can never quite get his king to safety. And so here we go into the long, like, theoretical, like, how many different options does Black have to try to play this position? And there's a lot. Because, like I said, it's really unclear how Black will unwind his position. So we'll start with some of the other lemons. So knight d4 is a little bit of a lemon here um, this is actually kind of a big one so knight d4 blocks the bishop directly and again it seems like a direct attempt at a refutation we're just going to kick that knight back we're going to play check after bishop d7 we're going to play check and then this is the whole idea we play knight b6 we get that fork anyway and then we grab on a8 and we simply castle and this position is not just slight edge white this position is somewhere between major to decisive advantage white White should have a winning advantage, a decisive advantage over here on the queen side with um, just basically advancing his queen side pawns until he gets a passed pawn. And, you know, the, the, the issue is, is whenever this pawn exists on the e4 square hemming in all of Black's material, it's just going to take Black way too long to activate his stuff. And meanwhile, when these pawns advance on the queen side, White is going to be supporting these pawns with every single piece that White has in his camp. This is simply decisive advantage white. So this is certainly not the way black wants to play if he wants to refute his white idea or even just get a reasonable position against white's idea. So he's going to have to try something else. So we run into um, some of the other options. So one idea is we could just run with the king right away. We could play something like king f7. This is actually almost identical to um, other tries, but we'll say king f7. Bishop b6, putting pressure on that queen, queen d7, and now knight, uh, now bishop takes b5, preparing to bring our bishop back to c4 as quickly as possible. So now queen g4 trying to trade queens. This was one of the first lines that um, an older style engine that I had uh, popped out at me as being best for black. Um, but it turns out that white has actually probably just got a major advantage here. After f3, queen g2, we're going to have rook g1, queen h2, and then knight c7. And the idea is... We're threatening queen d5, followed by castle's queenside, uh, where absolutely everything's going to be attacking the black king, and, and black's position will be completely dead. And it's just, there's no good move here for black. So if knight d4, we're going to uh, have to take it, because of course they are threatening queen g1, so we would have to play bishop d4, e d4, queen d4. And it doesn't look like we have anything, but bishop c4 is coming. Um, or knight takes rook is coming. <laughs> So it's hard to find a saving move here. So queen h4 check. We could throw in this check. I do have to play king d1. Rook a6. Better than giving it up for nothing, I guess. But queen c4 check would be winning. So queen c4, d5. Bishop e8 check. King e7. Knight d5 check. King back. And we have a winning attack. We're going to be picking up that rook. 
and this would be major advantage white this would actually be decisive advantage white white's up a lot here white's up a clear exchange um and a couple of pawns and um he's actually still attacking and black still hasn't managed to figure out how to develop his king side so this is kind of the nightmare scenario um this is what we don't want so i wouldn't recommend preemptively running with the king so now we get into the ones that are a little bit more um fuzzy uh well no there's one more lemon so one more lemon that's not very good is this check um these checks almost never work in these situations because they don't solve any of the problems the threat of bishop b6 and knight c7 is still there so here we have c3 and then rook a6 and then bishop takes b5 so the whole point is this bishop can't be captured we're still threatening that rook and that rook is actually in such a pickle that the best thing to do probably isn't even to take it so like for example if knight on g to e7 we could just poke at the queen get the queen to go back and then we could just ignore that rook and we could play a4 because the rook has nowhere good to go um if the if the rook goes the rook can't go back to a7 it would simply be captured a5 and a4 are covered b6 is covered and of course a8 will be met with bishop b6 followed by knight c7 followed by knight takes a8 picking up that rook so we can take the rook at any time that rook is dead and of course they don't have moves like knight takes d5 because takes and we're, we're winning material there so there simply isn't anything good um, rook a8 just so you can see this variation we would actually hit the king and get the king out before we take the rook and now we have the light squares and we have the rook and we would just have a huge advantage here so this would just be huge advantage white as well so queen a5 is another lemon so what are the best options for black what are the options that we actually have to kind of prepare for and be aware of well there there's not a whole lot left um bishop e6 is reasonable uh just developing a piece um and so much so often in in openings like this usually the right answer is just develop a piece develop a piece and give up some material and this is reasonable because after bishop d6 queen c8 knight c7 king f7 um we still were going to try to play bishop b5 we're going to set up some stuff and then again just develop a piece that's that's what we need to do we just need to develop a piece even if it's just putting a bishop behind our pawns we need to develop a piece because this seems like the only move that we can really make that kind of makes white decide that perhaps the best thing to do is just to take that rook on a8 while he still has the time and so that's just probably the best thing is just get some of this material back and then we could play a4 and then this position is unclear but this is one of the few positions that has a real potential to be slight advantage black because black does have a game plan now to finish his development and get his king safe and black has two pieces for the rook so basically white's going to have to prove that he can really get something going um with this eventual advance of his queenside pawns and that he can do that before black can completely free his position uh, by finishing his development with his knight by finishing his development with his rook so we can sort of classify this position as unclear but this is one of the positions that's possibly you know slightly better for black but i'm just going to say it's unclear I got, I got a bishop pair and i got a clear plan on the queen side i'm going to advance my queen side pawns and i have a rook you have two pieces so this is possibly reasonable but bishop, bishop e6 is a possibly reasonable line for for black so the other option that's possibly reasonable here is a rook a4 and i'm not a hundred percent sure what the best move is here for white um it's possible that f3 is good here just holding this pawn and just maintaining all the threats but it seems like the, the way to go is b4 to just cover this up um is this actually very similar to some other sacrificial continuations where we play b4 to kind of break these lines um and the idea is is that we've basically just reiterated our threat we've reiterated the threat of bishop takes b5 we've reiterated the threat of bishop to b6 followed by um knight c7 so here it seems like the best thing to do is to give up this exchange and to play rook takes b4 knight b4 is just completely impossible um if knight b4 we're going to have bishop b5 we're going to take that rook and then we're going to take the knight and we're going to be up an enormous amount of material and white's just completely winning here so what we're going to need to play instead is we're going to need to play rook uh we're going to need to play rook before and give up that exchange uh, and then after we give up the exchange uh it's it's not clear if we have quite enough compensation again for the material so we have the situation again where where we have a rook they have two pieces 
and we have to prove that we have something for this. So bishop d7, a4, we're going to have knight e7, castles, knight on e to c6, queen d2, bishop e7, a5, queen c8, uh, rook fb1, knight a6, and then bishop c4. And if it wasn't for the fact that I still have no idea exactly how black is going to get his king out of the middle without further concessions, I would say that black is clearly better. But because it's unclear exactly how black gets his king out of the middle and finishes his development, and because white does have two bishops and has open lines and has a plenty of play and black still has weaknesses in the light squares, uh, white should have some compensation for the material here, and this position should still be relatively unclear. Um, but anyways, uh, that's my quirky kind of line. Um, I don't have a... a total judgment on it quite yet. I'm not absolutely positive if the line is 100% sound for white, but it's certainly something worth exploring, and I think it's certainly something worth playing. I think that the positions are either unclear or, you know, black is going to make some sort of mistake, and of course these positions are then major advantage white, um, and there's plenty of traps where you can play this, and, you know, you're going to win a lot of games in, you know, six, seven, or eight moves where black just falls for the checkmate tricks. Um, so anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something new about chess, and I hope you can use some of these ideas in your own games. Thank you very much for watching.